Welcome to Live in That DMV Life. I'm Ernie Kiger, and today we're talking with renowned celebrity chef Spike Mendelson, who came to fame as one of the top finishers of the fourth season of the TV show Top Chef. Spike is the chef and owner of multiple area restaurants, including Good Stuff Eatery, Santa Rosa Taqueria, We the Pizza, PLNT Burger, a vegan restaurant inside the Whole Foods down the street from me in Silver Spring. Now, did I miss anything? Uh, well, no, no. You, uh, we, we just we, we have Vim and Victor also in Springfield, Virginia, which is uh, inside oh. a sports complex. A uh, really cool, really cool restaurant there. And then we just uh, very exciting. We just launched uh, Eat the Change Snack Company, uh, uh-huh. basically a uh, mushroom jerky. So, <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we're continuing the plant-based movement a little bit, Ernie. So we uh, came out with this delicious uh, mushroom jerky. Uh, you can find it at Mom's Whole Foods. Um, you can buy it online on the website. So, All right. You also might be familiar with Spike from a multitude of TV programs, Rachel Ray, The View, Good Morning America, The Early Show mm-hmm. on CBS. And Spike has also been known to appear at various places all around this VanMeterHomes.com website and on our social media. Spike, thank you so much for joining us today. I've tried cooking myself. Some people have a knack for certain things. Other people definitely do not. I don't. Uh, you, I've tried cooking. You cut yourself. You you burn yourself. You leave it on the stove too long and it's ruined. You add too much spice. It's ruined. You start tearing your hair out. How can this be that you chose this for your life's work? Now, come on. <laughs> uh, well, I'd like to say it. Uh, I did not choose it. It chose me uh, uh-huh. first and foremost. I was raised in um, in a family of restaurateurs and chefs and um, a big Greek family in the restaurant business, basically. So for for me, it, it's uh, I grew up in it. Actually, I tried everything, Ernie. I tried everything to get out of the business and not, uh, uh-huh. you know, you know, you don't want to. When you grow up, it's it, it's not mo- most. You're not most of the times trying to emulate your parents' path, right, or your parents' career, right, which they were in the restaurant industry. And you have to tell you, it's it's a hard industry, right? Yeah, like for uh, everything that you just said, on top of like, you know, you work the weekends, you don't have the holidays, you're in the service department, so uh, it's a rough ride. Um, but I did find confidence. When I finally decided, uh, I made a deal with my parents. They said, "Like work at my work at our restaurant for a year strong and, and learn how to manage it, and we'll send you to culinary school." And they kind of brokered a deal with me. And um, so that year, I, got, I, I, you know, I fit my end of the bargain. And I had always been working in the restaurant, but not in a very serious capacity, you know. Um, and then they sent me to culinary school, and it was culinary school where I was like, "Oh." You don't know what a Bernays is? Like, how do you not know? Mm-hmm. All these things that were like just so common to me, right? Because I, I grew up whisking Bernays and making mashed potatoes and braising beefs and do, doing all these things. And all these people were having trouble in the class. So that's kind of the little bit of confidence and eye-opening experience at, you know, the first couple of weeks of culinary school where I said, oh, like, I know, I know things that others don't, like kind of thing, you know? And, and then I went for it, so. I grew. I'm a little bit older than most folks, so I grew up watching Graham Kerr and Julia Child. And but now chefs are doing things they seldom used to do, like hosting competitive TV shows about cooking and even throwing out the first pitch at the World Series. Yeah, um, cra- crazy. But how hard is it to find time these days to work on your craft and come up with new, fresh ideas these days with so many other things going on in your world? Yeah, you know, I think it's a just it's 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 a good dose of balance. I have to say, at this point in my life right now, I just I just turned forty uh, this last year. I'm the busiest I've ever been, and I, and the portfolio is very different. The the most different it's ever been. And what I mean by that is, you know, as the restaurant industry grows and 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 moves forward, um, there's a lot of technologies that are coming into play, and and different formats and and different just models of what it means to be a chef and what it means to be in the industry. And I have been in the industry so long that menu planning and all that other stuff, uh, I'm a little bit like I plateaued on it, you know, a little bit like the creative, like I've been in it so long that now, like to me, it's like, Oh, what, what's the disruptive part of being a chef mean, right? Like what's paving the next way for other chefs to, to get into different markets and, and, and not just have to be, you know, kind of chained to their, the restaurant, right, and 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 work right. all those hard hours. So diversifying the portfolio is kind of what I'm working on, and I have to say it comes with a lot of help. You know, it's I get a lot of the, you know, I get a lot of the, the 
you know, the, the notoriety for it, but uh, it, it all starts with a, a very good team that is you trust and that you can work with to accomplish all these things. But, but yeah, you know, and they allow me and really what, what happens is they allow me to stay in my lane and do what I do best, which I, I think is being creative and coming out with campaigns and flavors and different like models. Uh, and then they do what they're doing best at keeping it all aligned and making sure it works and making sure it makes mm -hmm. sense. So this way it kind of frees me up to have that creativity and, and, and uh, apply myself in different ways. And I mean, as you know, like, you know, one of the things I'm really excited, most excited about now is Van Meter Homes, you know, um, yeah. to, to me, uh, it's like a dream come true for a chef to be designing rest, I mean, designing kitchens for other people, you know, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's such a, a fun thing that I kind of fell in by a little bit of, of, of luck. And, and, you know, I met, I met Glenn, a marketing director from Van Meter and we hit it off and, you know, I toured him on my restaurant, uh, Vim and Victor. And, 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 um, he saw this aesthetic on the way that I had designed Vim and Victor that was very homey. And I didn't set out to design it that way for a home builder. I set out to design it that way for the people that are visiting the sports facility. I wanted them to feel at home. Right. Mm -hmm. Because the sports facility that we opened up, the St. James has like a spa, it has like ice rinks, it has water slides, it has everything that you could kind of want. It has a retail shop, it has a restaurant, you know, it has all these things. And I, and the purpose there was to make it feel like home to everyone when they were at the complex. So you would just stay there for a couple hours and like feel great about it. So that aesthetic I thought was very appealing to Glenn. And he's like, Hey, like, which the way you design your restaurant really like looks like the way we like to design our, our homes and kitchens. And, uh, have you ever thought about designing kitchens? And I was like, have I ever thought about it? You know, like I, I think about it, I've thought about it for years. So once the opportunity came up, I was just, I was so, so excited to be doing it. So. And they're featured in many of our brand new floor plans at Van Meter Homes right now. I'll take you back to my grandmother, born in the 1800s. She cooked on a wood stove. I mean, you yeah. threw wood in it. And, and that's I remember her cooking as being the best food I've ever tasted. Now, my mom and my aunts, however, were quite sure that the stove itself made a huge difference, that one stove could be better than the other, even if they were the same model of stove. I've heard hours upon hours upon hours of debate on this issue. Settle this for me, please. How does technology affect performance in the kitchen? Yes, absolutely. Well, well, technology is all about consistency, right? And I'll, uh, I'll break it down in the easiest way possible that I know, right? Um, and I'll take a page out of your grandmother, right? Uh, cooking over wood fire, right? Uh, your grandmother probably set that fire, controlled that fire, fed that fire for years and years and years of her life, right? She knew exactly the hot spot in her kitchen where to get the, the, the water boiling. She knew the spot to get the medium heat right to move to move around and get your you know the roasting at a 250 temperature so i bet she really knew and it was very personalized right her her her, her wood oven was very personalized to her and how she knows how to operate it right now same thing in a restaurant one of the biggest struggles i had is like when i did wood fire pizza at one of my restaurants the most important position was the guy that was controlling the fire and the fuel for that oven right he had to keep it up at a certain certain level of heat right temperature he couldn't let it hurt her, uh, her or him couldn't let it go under a certain heat right level and it had mm -hmm. to be this continuous like continuous thing to keep the product consistent that everything always cooks the same right and that's what i'm getting to technology has improved kitchens where you know you can t put the dial there and get the oven to 450 degrees and every time you turn that dial it's going to be 450 degrees right for the most time give or take on how many times you open the oven door by the way, keep the oven door shut, guys. Stop opening it up and, and closing it a bunch, right? Let keep you, you let the heat escape. All right, we're not trying to heat. We're not trying to heat the home. We're trying to heat the food. Mm -hmm. So so um so so that's how technologies have taken place. You know, like I think of hand whisking. The amount of time it takes for hand whisking, like with now, like you have like these blending mixing. You know, I love that you brought up Julia Child because actually. Uh, I, uh, Julie Child was a huge inspiration to me for uh, part of what we did with the pantry uh, with Van Meter Homes and uh, and the shelving, right? So Julie Child, if you look back to her kitchen, she had this old construction uh, hold boards, you know, that you buy at Home Depot, and she had every Ernie, she had every single tool that she owned mm -hmm. hung on this board, right? It was just like, you know, like whisks and the spoon and this and that, and she did that 
one, because it's, it's easy to reach for and it's right there, but she also did that for inspiration, like having the spices open and freeing up the shelving. So you can kind of, you know, as a chef, to, when you use inspiration, it's, it's often with what you, you're seeing it in that moment. Oh, like I see a ricer and like, oh, I got sweet potatoes. Like, let me make some rice sweet potatoes or, you know what I mean? Like you draw inspiration from the equipment that you use and the spices that you have. So in the Van Meter homes, like uh, the, um, the pantry, we reinvented the pantry. We brought daylight into the pantry. We have two beautiful windows there. We have extra um, refrigeration, uh, table uh, shelving. Uh, we have all these things. It's kind of like your, your prep kitchen, if you will. Uh, and also then in the main kitchen, all the shelves are open. Uh, and you can, you know, put your plates there or, or your equipment there. So, I, I find a, a commonality in uh, most uh, um, popular chefs in that they have a real passion for what they do, and they have a way of uh, transferring that uh, enthusiasm to uh, their audience. I le- it, it affects me that way. It doesn't improve my cooking at all. But I do have a question that um, um, I, I think that many people listening in uh, could relate to. Um, what advice might you give someone who has to decide every single night what to cook for dinner? I mean, every single night, every single night um, for their family for what seems to be the rest of their lives. I mean, this can be the biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, It's a great question you ask because I, I, you know, I struggle with this with my wife and I, like we have to cook every night for our child and our family and, and, um, you know, what I, and as a chef, I actually like people to go out and, and eat as well, right? So it's like, I'm developing sure. these kitchens. I want you to cook in your kitchens because we've just renovated these amazing chef's kitchens. So like you want to cook in them. I want you to cook in them. As a chef, I want you to eat out at our restaurants too, right? Or any, so I think right. the, the, the best way for a family um, so they don't stress themselves out every single day is planning a little bit. And maybe planning around some themed nights, right? So what I like to do is like, you know, there's enough food groups around to attach to a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right? So for instance, like Mondays can be meat, meatless, right? You can do, you could start off the week if you, if you want to by eating veggies for dinner or doing something vegetarian, right? Tuesdays, you can go to a taco night, right? Which is fun. Like, so that, and that can mean Mexican food or this or that, right? And it's all personalized, right? And maybe Wednesdays is like something Mediterranean that you make at home, right? That you're you're using a recipe. And if you can give like certain days of the week like a theme, right? Maybe Friday nights is like we go out, right? We go out Friday nights. Um, Saturday nights is like smorgasbord, and then Sunday nights is like food waste night, like like empty the fridge out mm-hmm. from the week, right? And like just just like you know do do something like that. So yeah. if you could kind of like think in, in that way, where it's like you know, and then, and, and then that allows you to really shop, um, uh, uh, that really allows you to shop that way too, as well. So, you know, one thing I started doing back in April was using all the, uh, delivery services, the DoorDash and all, and, uh, the local restaurants and where I live in Albany, Maryland, um, a couple times a week, I will have their food delivered to me. And then I'll take a picture of it before I start eating and put it on Facebook just, you know, to help these guys out. Um, give them a little bit of say, Hey, you know, these guys are open. The food is great. And, um, please, you know, do a little bit of community service for, for them and for you. Uh, speaking of service, you are also known for your, you do a ton of charity work. I've heard about it for uh, a good while now in the DC central, central kitchen and, uh, the capital food fight. Can, Can you tell us a little bit about your involvement there? Yeah, absolutely. So DC Central Kitchen is an organization I first started getting involved with when I first came onto the scene here. It was about 2008. Um, and I was really just a chef testant on the, my first interaction. I was actually one of the competing chefs uh, at the food fight. And, um, you know, I just fell in love with what they really, what they did. I mean, they, you know, there's, there's such great complexity of what they do that I'm not sure that people even realize how that system really works for them, where, they take incarcerated people and they put them through, they give them their second chance or even sometimes third or fourth chance in life to, to just better their lives. Right. So, and they do that through uh, a culinary training program. Right. Right. Um, for us, like hospitality businesses and very demand, you could travel all around the world, get a job really anywhere. If you had like a certain set of skills in the kitchen or in front of the house, for instance. Right. So giving them a culinary degree and giving them the know-how, 
I think is, is, is crazy. And then, and then these people go back into the workforce, right? Uh, and, and work, and it's just a positive thing. But while they're at school, the, the culinary program that they're, they're going through actually feeds the homeless, right? So every day yeah. they're packaging foods and feeding the homeless all over DC and in the food deserts. And, I, you know, and I've been to numerous of the graduations and I, I've seen how emotional the, these graduations are for some of these uh, students where honestly, like they, they really, you know, at times have felt like the world has given up on them. Uh, and that they have no chance. And DC Central Itch Kitchen comes in and gives them this awesome moment of relief, support, um, and also just like know-how, right? Just like skill, a skill set, an actual skill set to, to go out into the workforce. Um, I have hired many DC Central Kitchen graduates uh, throughout my restaurants, and it's one of the most re rewarding hires for me to do. We currently have a rock star uh, employee from DC Central Kitchen that's running a plant burger, a PLNT burger, mm -hmm. uh, and um, he, he graduated a couple years ago, and 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 now he's he's managing two of our stores. And it, it's you know I, I get on these calls once a week just to you know like listen in on some of the team calls, and he's like so appreciative. He's 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 thinking that's out of the box. He's improving our brand. He's improving you know, you know, our, our employees. And it's just like, you know, just to see it full circle, I, you know, th th that's why I'm in. And yes, you're right. I, I host Food Fight now. I went from a chef test to hosting it now with Jose Andreas. Um, and he's a great host as well. And we, we have a ton of fun every year and, and we raise, a, we raise a, a nice bit of amount of money for everyone. So it's, it's a good thing. Chef Spike, you are one busy guy and we really appreciate you spending a little time with us today. Thank you so much and bon appetit. Ernie, thank you so much. And Ernie, I want to see some, some cooking out of you, okay? <laughs>